fall is here. At least for me, it's fall where I live right now in Oregon, USA. And a little while ago, I was walking in the park with some friends and on the ground, I found a little acorn. And I decided to take it home with me and I was looking at it and I was thinking, you know what? I wanna make this in Blender. So that's what we're gonna do today. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make these stylized acorns in Blender. If you want to download the finished project files, they're going to be available on my Patreon and Gumroad. The links will be in the video description for that. And we are going to be doing some texture painting to create the stylized look to these acorns. So if you have some sort of drawing tablet to do the texture painting, that would be helpful. And you can use a mouse for the texture painting, but you're probably going to have a better result if you can use some sort of drawing tablet. Now I'm going to be doing this tutorial in cycles because cycles is more realistic and I like it but this definitely can work with Eevee as well. And you can see here it is an Eevee. It does look pretty nice, it looks pretty similar. So if you wanna do it in Cycles or Eevee, you can do whichever one you want. And I'm gonna be using this Autumn Hockey HDRI on HDRI Haven. The link will be in the video description if you want to download this. And I'm gonna be using this HDRI because it has some really nice fall colors and will make our scene look a lot nicer. All right, and here I am in Blender now. So I'm gonna start off by just deleting everything. Oh, let me turn on my screencast keys. Don't wanna forget that. So you can see what buttons I'm pressing. Uh, nope, right over there on the other side of the screen. You can see what buttons I'm pressing. So let's just delete everything. So I'm gonna press A, select everything, and then click X and delete. Um, let's press Shift A now. And I'm gonna choose a circle. So we're gonna start by modeling um, the little like hat top thing of the acorn. So um, right behind me, uh, if I click on the add circle, you can see right over there, add circle. Uh, you can see here there's the vertice count. Now, if you've moved your object around at all, then this is gonna go away. So if you did that, just delete the object and add a new object so that you can use these settings. So on the vertices here, it starts at 32, um, but I don't wanna use that many vertices. So I'm just gonna type in eight and then close this. You can see now it looks more low poly, but we're gonna be adding a subdivision surface modifier later to smooth that out. Um, I'm gonna press period on the number pad to hop us over to this circle. And if I tab into edit mode, you can see now that it has eight uh, different little points. So let's select everything with A. I'm gonna press F to fill it so that it, the uh, face is filled. And then I can press E and extrude it up. So I'm gonna extrude it a little bit up and then I'll press E again, uh, extrude it up a little bit more. You can just click like that and then I'll press S and scale it down. I have reference photos up of acorns on a second monitor next to me, so if you want to pull up some reference photos, that's definitely going to be helpful for modeling. So now I'll press G and Z, pull it up a little bit, and scale it down a little bit more. Just something like that, okay? And then let's press E and S again to make it even smaller, and then uh, there's kind of a little stem thing on top of acorns, so I'll press E, extrude this up, scale it down even smaller, maybe not that far, bring it a little bit down. Um, I'll press R to rotate it to kind of make it going off to one side. E and extrude it out, rotate it over a bit and scale it down. And that way we have this little uh, nice little stem here. Now I do think this is probably a little bit too big. So to scale this entire stem down a bit, I'm gonna press Z, move my mouse over and then let go. And that'll go into the wireframe mode. And then I can press B and click and drag and box select that little area and then press S, scale it down. Maybe press G and Z and move it down a little bit. And there we go, I think that looks a lot nicer. Now this is really blocky, but we're gonna smooth it out. And to do that, let's click on this little wrench right here. I'm gonna click on add modifier and we're gonna add a subdivision surface and this smooths out our mesh. Now I wanna turn up the viewport and render to two so I'll just turn that up and now they're at two. You can see it's a lot smoother now, but you can still see the little chunks. So to smooth this out even further, we're gonna use smooth shading. So I use right click select. Um, so what I do is I press W and then click on shade smooth. Um, you should just be able to left click select and then click on shade smooth or go right over here and go object and then click on shade smooth right there. 
Now you can see that the subdivision surface modifier smoothed out the mesh, but there are still some areas that I want to be more defined. Like you can see, this is a little bit too smooth. I want it to be a little bit more round right here. So what I'm gonna do is to tab into edit mode and just select this face. Um, if you're not in face select mode, you can press right here to go to the face select. This is um, vertex select. This is edge select and this is face select. You can also press one, two, and three on your uh, top numbers on your keyboard to select these different uh, selections. So now that I'm on the face select, I'll click on this face right here, and I'm gonna press G and Z and move it down a little bit more. Then I'll press I, and that is the shortcut key for insetting. So we'll inset that with the I key, bring it down just a little bit, and then I'm gonna E for extrude and just bring it up a little bit. And then maybe press S, scale it down a little bit. And that way it gives it kind of a lip around the acorn hat. I think it looks pretty nice. Also, you can see that right here, this is really smooth. You can leave it like that if you want, but I'm going to tab into edit mode and I wanna give this a little bit more definition so it's a bit sharper on these edges. So to do that, I'm gonna add a loop cut. To do that, you press Control R and then you move around to where you want to add the loop cut. And this is gonna add more vertices into your mesh. So I want it to be around here. So I'm gonna click once, then you can see that it, it's giving you options to slide it. I'm just gonna slide it pretty close up to the top and then click again and that way it places it. You can see now it's added that loop there and it sharpens up that edge. Okay, so now let's save our project uh, before we forget because if Blender crashes, then we'd have to restart the video. Let's go file and click on save. And I'm just gonna save it in a folder right here. I'll just call it acorns and click on save blender file. Okay, and then if you wanna save, you press control S and that way it's gonna save it. So I just have a good habit of pressing control S a lot while I'm modeling so that I'm always saving the file. So control S or you can go file and just click on save. Okay, let's model the uh, bottom part of our acorn. So I'm gonna press Shift C. What that will do is it will bring the uh, this little crosshair thing. If I press Shift C, it's gonna bring it to the center of our scene. And that way, when I press Shift A and I click on adding a circle, it's gonna add it wherever that little crosshair is. Now you can see we already set it to eight and that's what I like. I wanna leave it like that because we don't really need a whole lot more detail. So I'll tab into edit mode, press A, make sure everything's selected and we'll press S, scale it down so that it's inside our little hat. And then I'll press E and extrude it out. Now you can see that um, it's just extruding it out freehand and we want to extrude it down. So what I can do is I can tell it to extrude it straight down. So what you do is you press Z and that way it'll constrain it to the Z axis. So I can just bring it down and then click when you've chosen the spot where you want it to be. Now I've been looking at reference photos of acorns and it looks like some acorns are like bigger, lumpier and fatter, whereas some other acorns are thinner or smaller. You can see this acorn is actually really small. Um, it's quite small. So you can do whatever you want. Um, you could also make multiple acorns. Like after we finish this acorn, you could adjust it and make some of them bigger, some of them smaller. So just do whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna try to make an average sized one. So I think this is a little bit too long. So I'm gonna press G, Z, pull this back up a little bit. Okay, now I'll press E to extrude again, Z on the Z axis and bring that out, bring it out a bit farther. And then I'll press S and scale it down. Now, uh, looking at acorns again, there's kind of a little tip at the very bottom of it. So I'm just gonna press E and Z, bring it down a little bit more. We can press the period key on the number pad to zoom into where we are, and then press S, make it even smaller. Press E and extrude it out a little bit more, Z, and then scale it down a bit more and press F to fill that. So now you can see we have this little point at the end. Now, I think this point is probably a little bit too big, so I'm gonna press Z, in edit mode, go to wireframe, B, box select this area, and S and scale it down, and there we go. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier now to smooth out the mesh. So I'm just gonna click on subdivision surface right here, and then change it to two, and then shade it smooth. Now I wanna make it coming out a little bit more, make it a little bit lumpier. So to select just this loop to scale it up, 
I can hold down the Alt key and click right here in this loop. And that way it's gonna select the entire loop. And then I'll press S, scale it up a little bit. I could even double tap A to select the whole thing and press S and scale it out a bit more, just like that. And then this loop down here, I want this loop to be kind of more up here so it can, that it can curve a little bit better. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, click right here to select the loop. And then we can actually slide the loop up and down. So to do that, you double tap the G key and now you can see I can slide it up and down. I'm just gonna slide it kind of more to the center here and then S, scale it out a little bit. And then also I'll scale this down a little bit more, something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. I do want it to be a little bit thicker though. So I'll tab into edit mode, press A to select everything and press S for scale, Z, for the z-axis and bring it up a little bit. Okay, make it a little bit fatter. And then what I can do is press G to grab Z and just bring the whole thing a little bit more down. And I think I do want this bottom area to be a little bit more pushed up. So I'll press Z, move over here and let go to go into wireframe. Uh, A to deselect everything. I'll press B, box select this, and then press G and Z move it up a little bit more. Okay, there we go, that's the modeling, so I really like this. Let's just go file and save again. So just model it however you want, kind of tweak it, play around with it, get it to the right shape that you like. Okay, so now we're gonna be doing the texture painting. Before we do the texture painting, we're gonna need to UV unwrap the mesh so that the mesh has UVs so that we can place it on a map that we can texture paint on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this top little um, acorn hat and we'll tab into edit mode and then I'm going to just pick a loop it doesn't really matter which one I'm gonna hold down alt and click right here so it selects that entire loop then what I'm gonna do is press Control E and then I'll click on mark scheme and there we go you can see it adds a little red line there that's what we want uh, let's tab back into object mode now click on this one and we'll tab into edit mode we're gonna do the same thing. So just hold down Alt, click on any loop, and then press Control E and click on Mark Seam. Now we need to UV unwrap the mesh. So I'm gonna press A and select everything and I'll press U and then I'll click on Unwrap. Let's tab back into object mode now. I'm gonna click on the top object, tab into edit mode, and then press A to select everything and I'll press U and do the same thing. So click on unwrap right there, and then we'll tab back into object mode. Now to show you what that's done, let's click over on this UV editing tab. And you can see it's already thrown us into edit mode, and you can see this is what it's done. So it's cut out the mesh, and it's placed it flat. So think about this mesh sort of like being paper and the little red line right there is like scissors cutting through the mesh. And now we can open the mesh up and make it flat. Now behind this, we're gonna add a texture and then we'll texture paint on it. And it's going to add the textures onto this uh, plane that we're gonna add. And that way Blender knows where the texture is gonna be placed on the object. If I tab into object mode, click on this and then press tab and select everything, you can see it's done the same thing. So it's kind of cut it out. You can see here's where it's been cut and it's just been opened up. Um, what I do want to do though is press A to select everything, press R and rotate this so that we have more room and then scale it up. Because if it's bigger, then we're going to be able to get more, uh, like a higher resolution of texture. So I'll just scale this up. Make sure though it's inside this little box here. And there we go, just like that. Okay. I'll tab back into object mode here. Okay, now let's make the textures that we're going to texture paint on. So right here, I'm gonna click on new to add a new texture. And you can see here's the name. I'm gonna call it uh, top, top right there. And you can see here's the width and the height. Now this is the resolution of the textures. So this is how high quality it is. I wanna make the resolution of my texture bigger so that it will be higher quality. So I'm just going to click on this, make it like, 3000 and 3000. So this is in pixels, I believe 3000. Yeah, it is. So PX is for pixels. So uh, that's going to be a lot higher quality. Now I want to make this kind of a dark brown because it's going to be the top of our uh, acorn. So just figure out a color that looks nice. And then once you've set all those up, you can click on OK. And now you can see it's added this image here. 
Now let's do the same thing, but for the bottom one. So I'm going to click on the X key, but you can see it's actually right down here. So we didn't actually get rid of it. I'm going to click on new and I'm going to make this one the same width. So three, about 3000 pixels. You can make a different value if you want to. Um, and then I'm going to call this one bottom. Okay. And I want to make this one kind of a lighter brown color because it seems like acorns, the bottom area is a lot lighter something like that. Okay. And then click on, okay. And now we, now we have a bottom one and a top one. So I'll click on the top one to select it. Now, before we start texture painting, we need to put the image onto the mesh. So what we're going to do is go over here to shading. And now we're in the shading tab. What I can do is click on new, and this will add a new material. So I'm going to call this uh, bottom so here is the principled BSDF. That's the uh, shader that it is, but we want to tell it what the color is going to be. And the color is going to be the texture that we've added. So let's press shift a, or just click on this ad. I'm going to click on the search and I'm going to type in image. So click on image texture, add that in, and we can just plug the color up to the base color. Now I can click right over here and we'll get this drop down menu. And I'm going to click on the bottom one. You can see there it is. Now we need to do the same thing for the top one. So I'll click on the top, hit new. I'm just going to call it top like that. Um, I'll press shift A. I'm going to search for an image texture again. We'll grab the image texture and then the color has to go up to the base color right here. And then I'll click on this drop down and we're going to click on the top one. So to finally do the texture painting, let's click over on this texture painting tab and zoom in. And we don't really need to work with this. So I'm just going to make it really small by dragging it over like that. Now I'm going to be using my screen drawing tablet. So I'm going to hop over to that. If you have a pad tablet or something that definitely would work good. If you have a mouse, you can just texture paint with your mouse, but it might be a little bit harder and you may not get as good of a result. All right. And I've hopped over to my drawing tablet and I have my pen and my drawing glove. And one thing that I forgot to say is whichever object we have selected, it's going to throw us into the texture painting. So I had the wrong object selected, so it's going to texture paint the bottom one. I'm just going to control Z to undo that. Let's go back to shading and select the top one. So if you didn't do that, just make sure you have the top one selected, then go to texture paint. And you can see now you can paint uh, the top area. And I just realized that I think I want the base color of the acorn texture to be a little bit brighter because I think it's a little bit too dark right now. Um, but there's a really easy way to fix this. What you can do is just click on this color right here and choose the color that you want. If I want a new color. So I like how this color is, but I want it to be a bit brighter. And then I'll go over here and click on the fill tool and I'll just click right here and you can see it's changed it. So it's very easy to just go ahead and change that if you want to change the color and you can do this for the bottom one as well. Just make sure you're in the texture painting mode for that object. Okay. So now that I have a lighter color, I'm going to make a darker color and make it a little bit more strong, something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go over to the brush and I'll make this really small. I think I'm going to do like 16 pixels. Whoops. Something like that. Something like 16 pixels. You can press F and change the brush size if you want. Okay. And there we go. And now I'm going to start texture painting the texture onto the top of the acorn. So after looking at reference photos, it looks like there's sort of these petal shaped things and they're kind of overlaying on top of each other. So this is what I'm going to do. And I think it makes a nice stylized look. Um, this is going to take a while because yeah, I'm going to texture paint the entire uh, top area with this, uh, texture. So definitely like pull up some music or something. Uh, you can pause the video and just uh, texture paint on. Also, if you make a mistake, you can press control Z to undo something. If you made a mistake, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep on texture painting this mesh. I'm trying to make some of them a little bit different, kind of make the shapes a little bit different, sometimes making them slightly wobbly, uh, just to give it some, some interesting shapes. So yeah, I have some, uh, I have some chill hop music on in the background. Also, while you're texture painting, you shouldn't close your blender file because if you do, it's not going to save this and you're going to have to re texture paint it. So after I'm done texture painting this, I'm going to save this image to an actual image on my computer. And that way blender can access it even when I've closed and reopened the blender file. 
And if you wanted to speed the process up, you could, instead of making them the size that I'm making them, you could make them even bigger. There would be less detail, but it, would, it wouldn't take as long to texture paint. Now, as I get to the end here, I'm just gonna kind of rotate down and then move around here. Okay, so I'm finished now. If you haven't finished this part yet, you can just pause the video, turn on some music or something and just uh, finish texture painting this. So now what I wanna do is press F and make my brush really big. And I wanna make a darker color, just a little bit darker. And I'm also gonna go right here to the strength and make it smaller. So I can just click and drag, make the strength smaller. And so now this is kind of like an airbrush and we're just gonna airbrush around this bottom area to make it darker. So you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but I think it looks pretty nice. Makes it look a bit nicer. So I'm just airbrushing. It's pretty light, but you can kind of notice it's kind of darker down here. And then also right here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So just kind of go around here, make this a bit darker. Okay, and then I'm also gonna make a light brown and I'm gonna kind of airbrush around this center area to lighten it up a bit. Pretty subtle. Okay, now I want to actually make a pretty light, strong brown color. Something like that probably. And I want to press F, make the brush a bit smaller, and then turn the strength way up back to one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint a lighter brown color inside all of the little areas. Now, yeah, I know this will take a little bit longer to paint, but I do think it's really worth it. I think it gives it a really nice look. So if you wanna go ahead and just do this, I'm just gonna paint in here and just make them a little bit brighter. Um, it'll be really nice. I think it makes it the texture kind of pop out. So yeah, I uh, think it's worth it. Okay, and then also I want to make this top area a little bit brighter. I think it just looks kind of nice. And that's gonna be it. Okay, so the next step is really important. We need to save this image because if we close Blender or Blender crashes, it's gonna lose all of this work that we've done. So let's go over here to the UV editing and then click over here on the image and click on save as. I'm just gonna save it as top.png and then click on save as image. So now we've saved this image. Okay, let's go ahead and texture paint the bottom one now. So I'm gonna go into object mode, select this object and then go into texture painting. Okay, so now we're texture painting this object. What I'm gonna do is pick a nice light brown color and press F, make my brush really small. And I'm just gonna start by adding in some little streaks. Okay, so they don't have to be too bright. I do, I do think they look nice if they're kind of small. Just kind of make some streaks coming down right here. And then also down here, you could make some streaks coming up from the bottom and a few streaks here and there uh, in the middle. But I think most of the streaks should be kind of at the top here coming down. Okay, and then to give a kind of a nice look, what I wanna do is press F, make it really big, turn the strength down to kind of give it an airbrush kind of feel and just go along here and make the center a bit lighter make it really bright, maybe make it a little bit more brownish and just kind of texture paint the center there, make it brighter. And then let's make a really dark brown and kind of go ahead and do that airbrushed look right here, make it darker on the edges. And then also down here, I think we should make this a little bit darker. I think it makes it look nicer. And right here you can see it says top. I need to change this to the bottom one and now I'm gonna go image and click on save as. And I'll just save it as bottom.png and click on save as image. Okay, so now we saved both of those. I'm gonna go file and save this again. So I am done texture painting now. So I'm gonna hop over back to my main monitor and move the drawing tablet aside. All right, and I'm back to my main monitor. So let's go ahead and set up some lighting and finish up the materials and make them just look really nice and then we'll render out the final image. So I'm gonna go over to the shading tab and you can see here it is, it's looking pretty nice. 
Okay, I'm gonna press Z and move my mouse up to go into the material preview. And you can see that our lighting is really bad. So let's set up some lighting. So I'm gonna click over here on the world and then click on the little dot right here. And I'll click on E and that'll go to the environment texture or you can just click on environment texture. And then I'm gonna click on open. And then I'll add in that autumn hockey HDRI. I just downloaded the 1K version because all we need is the lighting. So I'm just gonna open that up and you can see now it looks a lot nicer. Now, I just wanna make sure that you're using Filmic Blender because Filmic Blender is a lot more realistic. So if you click on this little render tab here and go all the way down, you can see there's this color management. Just make sure the view transform is set to Filmic and then I like to use high contrast. And you can see that definitely looks a lot nicer. Now let's click on the hat of the acorn. So one thing that I wanna do is add this color to the normal because I want it to kind of bump up a little bit um, and have the white parts bump up and have the dark parts bump down. So what I can do is just click on this color, drag it into the normal, and you can see it looks really weird. And what we need to do is we need to convert this color right here, you can see it's yellow for the color. We need to convert that to the normal data. So what I can do is press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a bump node. And the bump node can convert that into data which the normal can use. So I'm gonna change this from normal to height. And now the color is going to the height and then the bump is going into the normal. And you can see now it's making the dark parts go in and the light parts come out. Now right now it is really strong so I'm just gonna change this to maybe like 0.5 or something, you can play around with this. And I think that looks a lot better. And I think that might be a little too strong actually, so I'm gonna change it to maybe 0.3, <laughs> maybe 0.35. Okay, I like how that looks, but just play around with it until it looks how you like it. And then also you can play around with the colors a little bit because if the colors aren't quite how you like, you can press Shift A, search for an RGB curves, drop that in there and then just kind of play around with this. So I'm gonna pull this up a bit and then just kind of give it a curve here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it a bit more contrasty. Now I'm gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. If you don't have that enabled, you can click on Edit, go to Preferences, and then on the Add-ons tab, on the search here, you can start typing in Node Wrangler. I'm gonna just select that. And now if I close this, I can now use the features that the Node Wrangler gives us. So what I can do is I can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on the RGB curves. And that gives us this little view here so we can see exactly what the color is. So now I can just play around with this and just make it a color that I want. Um, this is totally optional. If you like how the colors are, you don't need to change any of this. Okay, so I like something like that. And then I can control shift and click back on the principled and it's gonna hop back to the actual shader preview. And now I'm going to edit the bottom part of the acorn. So if I click on the bottom part and go into rendered mode, you can see right now it looks a little bit simple. So I'm gonna add some stuff onto it to make it look a bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. I'm just gonna put the noise texture right down here and I'm going to press Control T, and this is a Node Wrangler feature. It adds this texture coordinate and mapping, and then I'll put the color into the normal, but you can see it looks really weird because we need to convert this to normal data. So I'll press Shift A and search for another bump node. Just drop it in there and then plug the color, not up to the normal, we need to plug it up to the height. And now you can see that that noise texture is being used for the bump. So you can just play around with this scale here if you wanna make it smaller or bigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down on the mapping node and the Z scale, I'm just gonna scale it way down to like 0 0.01. And what that does is it stretches the noise texture. So you can see now it's all stretched and it's a little bit too strong right here. So on the bump strength, I'm gonna change this to maybe like 0.2, maybe 0.25, that's a bit better. And now you can see it's subtle, but it does give it some nice detail. So if I take this off, that's how it is before. And if I plug this in, that's how it is after. Okay, so this is pretty much it. This is the finished acorn. Um, I'm gonna kind of make a little scene and we'll render it out. So I'm gonna hop over to the layout here and I'll press Shift A and I'm gonna add a plane for a ground plane. I'll scale this plane up. And then I wanna select this and Shift select this 
and press G to move it, R to rotate it, and S to scale it, and kind of place them around on the plane. If I want to duplicate this and make it a little bit different, I can select both of these, press Shift D, Shift D is the shortcut key to duplicate it, and then what I can do is I can tab into edit mode and change it. So if I want to make this like fatter, I can scale this up and I can scale it on the X, make it a little bit fatter, maybe move it in and rotate it around and just put it in a nice little pile. So you can just make a nice little pile of acorns. Maybe a squirrel's been collecting them or something. Now I duplicated this again and I want to actually separate this. So I'm going to just pull this out maybe rotate this and maybe make it so that like it's resting up against another acorn because sometimes they fall off. Now right here you can see that there's a hole here. What I'm going to do is tab into edit mode, hold down alt and click on this loop here and I'll just press E and S and make it smaller and then press F. Now if I want to go to the shader preview I can press Z and move my mouse down and let go. And this is going to give us a preview of the texture. And you can see here that the texture looks a little bit weird here. That's because we didn't actually texture paint this area. So what I'm going to do is just kind of rotate it away from where our camera is going to be so that you can't see it. So I'm going to have the camera kind of like this. So let's add a camera now. So I'm going to press shift A, go down to camera, and then I can just move to where I want the camera to be and then press Control alt zero and now the camera has hopped to where we are and I've decided that I want the camera to be a square image instead of a rectangular image. So what I'm going to do on this resolution on this little tab here, it kind of looks like a printer. I'm going to click on this and type in 1920. So now they're both 1920 by 1920 and you can see it's now a square camera. And I can just click on the camera and if you press zero on the number pad, you can go in and out of the camera. I'm just going to move this over and move it to a place that I want by pressing G to move. If I want to move it in or out, I can press G and then double tap Z and that way I can move it in or out. So I want to give it a little bit more room so I can put a few more acorns. Now the ground plane isn't big enough, so I'll just select the ground plane and press S and scale it up. Okay, and I like how that looks. I think that looks pretty nice. If you go into rendered mode now, you can see that it's really blown out and that's because of this white background. It's just really reflectant. So if I just click on this uh, and then go to the materials tab right here, I can click on new and then I can make it whatever color I want and kind of make it a darker color. Now I want to make it sort of a festive fall orangey kind of color. So I'm gonna just gonna make it a nice rich uh, darker orange color. And then if it's being really reflectant, you can also change this roughness value up. Now I do think that this HDRI is a little bit too bright and it's kind of blowing everything out a little bit. So I'm gonna turn the strength down to like a 0.2. So on the world settings right here, you can just change the strength down, uh, not a 0.2. I'm gonna change the strength to maybe 0.7 or 0.6. Okay, now we're ready to render out the image. So what I'm gonna do is just press uh, file and save again, just to make sure it's saved. And then you can press F12 to render out the image. And it's finished now, as you can see, looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna click over here on the compositing tab and I'll click on use nodes. And now you can see we have the render layers and the composite. So what I'm gonna do is press shift A, search for the denoise node, just drop that in there. And then if I use control and shift and click on the denoise node, that's gonna activate the node wrangler feature and add in this viewer node. Now to zoom out and see the backdrop a little bit better, I can press V to zoom out and alt V to zoom in. And if you don't see the backdrop, it might be because you need to press that button there. Okay, so now it's really smoothed out. If you wanna do just a few last things to make it look a little bit nicer, you can uh, press Shift A and search for like an RGB curves or you can search for any of these colors. If you go to the color, you can just add some of these and just play around with the color correction if it's not quite how you like. And then once the compositing is finished, you can press F11 and that's gonna go back to the render result. But I don't wanna use the render result because that still has that grain there and it's not color corrected. So I can click on this and then click on viewer node. 
and there's the final image. So what I can do is go image and click on save. And I'm just gonna save this as final render.png and just save that image. And here is the final image. These project files are gonna be available on my Patreon and Gumroad if you wanna check those out. The links will be in the video description. And if you'd like to show me your final result, you can leave a link in the comments to your finished artwork and I'll definitely check it out. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I hope you had fun and I'll see you in a future video.